Okay, so Alex, you're going to start off this podcast, you know, introduce us. Let us let everybody know what we're about. Boom. Go All ahead. right. Yo, what's up, everyone? This is Alex, and uh, it's a podcast, not just a podcast, the podcast you wanted to hear. Um, the Gaijin Smash new, Podcast. Yep, Gaijin Smash Podcast. That's right. The voice you've heard just... Uh, which interrupted me, yeah, is Kiko, your main host, remember that? And his co-host, Jerry. Say hi, Jerry, please. What's up? Yep, that's him. Yeah. And me, and me, <laughs> yeah, and me Alex, yeah. I'm just fucking around here. Yeah, no, it's fine. And Alex, <laughs> what is this about? What are we going to talk about? So, uh, usually our podcast is somewhat semi-educational. <laughs> semi Say why, yeah. yeah. So we have a little bit of Japanese, uh, yeah, a little bit of Japanese for you. Usually it's up to three words, with some exceptions, occasionally. What's the next, Kiko? <laughs> next? Okay, so yeah, we start off with the Japanese words, and then next we're going to throw some some Japanese stuff out there, like relating to Japan, whether it be like anime, dramas, music, sports, news. Or pretty much anything Japan related. We just talk about something relating to Japan. And then the third part is going to be freestyle. We talk about whatever we want, which includes um, things not relating to Japan, just whatever, whatever we feel like talking about. So to start off the first part, Japanese words. Um, and the last one, I started it off. So I guess, Jerry, what word do you have for us today? Well... So earlier today, so I was at work and I realized my Spotify um, is completely in Japanese. And I was like, you know, I, I have no idea how to navigate through this whole thing when I was tripping out. So instead of giving up and switching back to English, I was like, you know what, I just, let's just look up some of these kanji words. Well, just some of these kanjis, maybe I could figure out what the word is. And... I found a pretty common one. So, suika. Okay. You know, what is <laughs> <so funny>? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was expecting some kind of response from you guys, but no. That was the response. Yeah, I was expecting, or maybe Alex saying, oh, yeah, yeah, I see that a lot, or, or, or some bullshit, but no, just <laughs> silence. Fuck you, Dude, guys. It's because you're, you're, you're in the spotlight right now, man. We're not going to, like, steal your shit. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, speak. yeah. I like some feedback. Feedback, you know, <laughs> podcast. Are you gonna give feedback? Are you going to give it feedback if you're just going to be like, sweet guy? That's it, like, you don't tell us nothing about the word. You don't translate it. Well, I just wanted to see if some people recognize it. Maybe you guys seen it. Just be like, oh, you know, podcast is conversation, god damn it. <laughs> yes, we got I've heard of that word. Why don't you tell us about it, Jerry? <laughs> <laughs> you guys suck at this, okay. It just means to add, to append. So adding a song to a playlist, you know, suika, suru. Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought I thought we were talking about watermelons here. Man, fuck you. <laughs> no, uh, Jerry said, uh, Jerry said, uh, tsuika, not suika. Yeah, tsuika. Oh, not okay, okay. okay. Well, it's kind of it's like when you when you're listening to it, it's kind of hard to tell the difference. But uh, watermelon is S U I C A, suika, and the, the word the word Jerry is talking about is T S U I. CA? Right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. What made you think I went from Spotify to watermelon, though? Dude, I don't know, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I what mean, is it again? You can, but you're going to fuck up your device. Uh, what? So what is it again, Jerry? What, what does it mean? It means to add to a pen to, yeah. In this case, add a song to a playlist. And would that, well, Alex, you know more than us, would that also count to, like, towards, um... Besides music, like other situations, like yeah, basically editing, like uh, well, not editing, but uh, my bad, uh, adding, adding, adding stuff. Yeah, adding stuff to appending, like uh, yeah. Okay, I gotcha. All right, cool. Um, so suika suru, mm-hmm. and suru suru just means to do something. So um, suika is to add, 
and sudo is to do so the action of adding or uh, mm. just know that sudo sudo goes after like every pretty much like every verb or action mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. yeah so sudo is just to do all right alex you're up what do you got for us well um let, let me get back to that in one minute <laughs> okay while you think about it i'll bring out my word so my word is a very useful word and one you're going to hear very often if you ever go to Japan. It is taima. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a so, good word. Taima, the best way to remember it. Oh, see? Yeah. Hey, 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 Kiko, Kiko. You, you, notice, you notice the feedback from me me and Alex? Yeah, you guys didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I said that's a good word and Alex was like, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. I'm pretty listening to you guys. Yeah, I feel it's a pretty natural conversation at that point, isn't it? Just saying. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> since you interrupted me, I gotta. So before I get interrupted again, so time is really easy to remember. Um, the word time means, well, of course, time, you know, I have time, you have time, we all have time. Add a little A to the end, time. Uh, so that's an easy way to remember. So every time you look at your watch, oh, what's the time? Uh, Taima. So what does it mean? It means marijuana, weed, cannabis, earthly, herbal green, whatever you want to say, man. The green stuff, the good stuff, the weed stuff, the Colorado stuff. So that's what that means. So if you're in Japan and you're looking for some of that weed, some of that marijuana, you know, go up to some people and be like, yo, taimagarimasu ka? Taimagaru? Or aru means to have. So if you say taima aru in a question form, and be like, yo, do you have any weed? <laughs> yeah, if you want to get locked up in Japan, that's the <laughs> yeah. way to go. Yeah, no, no, don't, don't do that. Um, weed, weed is very, very looked down upon over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's kind of like... People completely uneducated about uh, drugs at all. Yeah, so no. let's, let, yeah, let's just say, you know what's... You, you know what's the weed, you've heard about cocaine. Yeah. They don't know what the hell is that. They just know there's drugs. That's it. Yeah, yeah. They're they're all categor they're all categorized in the same category. Like it's all the same shit. It's all bad shit for them. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. so, but um, what I found interesting is the kanji for taima is big, the kanji for big, and the second kanji is like two trees. I don't know. I don't know what word relates to it because it's not mori like forest or whatever. It's just like two trees and then like a roof over it. Do you know what I'm talking about? Alex? Um, yeah. If you can give me a couple sec, I can look it up. Yeah, because I don't think I don't think that kanji has a direct translation. It's just like two trees. But the way I looked at it, it was like big trees equals marijuana. <laughs> well, usually, uh, they, not every single kanji has a, a like a solid translation. Yeah, yeah. I think that's one of them. Like it doesn't have like a direct translation. Every but, single kanji does have a meaning, but not the literal translation. Yeah. No, the meaning is more for natives. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, taima it means weed, marijuana. <laughs> Don't ask me how I know that word. I just I just came across it when I was in Japan. <laughs> it's really it's just really easy to remember, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm looking right at it. Yeah. Do you 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 know what I'm talking about, right? Hi. Yeah, exactly. Well, the thing with the second kanji with a couple tree keys. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, basically for anything green and stuff like that. So it's not the the kanji. It's uh, mostly for the the tree keys in in the uh, in the kanji. So anything that's green. Well, in terms of the you know you know uh, in terms of the nature plants oh, yeah, okay. in one way or another they, they have a different set of conscious for different words and meanings all right so essentially the kanji is like big nature or big plants or big 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 something like that yeah, yeah. Big green, but big that's green. not the literal that's not the translation that's not the literal meaning but if you have to imagine something that's you know, one of the right ways to go oh yeah <laughs> Anyway, there you go. There's a word for you guys. You can put it in your word bank. But you'll probably never use it. All right. Jay, oh, not, no, Jay already said his word. Uh, Alex, what's your word? What do you got for us? Yeah, so many choices. And that's why I'm, uh, I don't know, I'm hesitating. Dude, how about, how, about, how about I give you one? You want me to give you one? Uh, Yeah, for sure. Nanpa. 
Nampak <laughs> You jurim mana <laughs> Uh, yeah, you do. God damn it, dude! I'm trying to be educational here, and here, here we are. Okay, okay, we're going down this. That's not care. a bad word, dude. That's not a bad word. I think. I think <laughs> well, um, that's that's a uh, culture context uh, for yeah, for that word. The 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 whole Nampa thing. Yeah. Well, uh, well, let's roll with that. That that could be interesting at least. Okay. So the word Nampa is uh, basically means uh, to pick up to pick up uh, in terms of the like to pick up girls you know yeah so you're on the streets you're just uh, looking up and you, you decided to highlight someone that's the number in Japanese but yeah. the thing is oh yeah what's up no, I was gonna say that that isn't bad to pick up for um, try and get at girls or whatever yeah but uh, the thing is uh, it's uh, definitely more uh, acceptable more usual than uh, than before nowadays mm. but the thing with the japanese culture in general they do not do that like as a common thing and by that i mean it's not as common and acceptable in general to do the nampa yeah, so, girls. yeah so for us like man here like here in the states man you go to the bar or whatever you go to the club you go to the store whatever you see a cute girl and you think she's or like a cashier you know you're like checking out or like buying some stuff and you see a cute cashier um it doesn't matter what situation it is you see a girl you think she's cute she looks cool you want to get at her you know like what's her name what's her number maybe like i can try and hang out with her someday whatever you know mm-hmm. pick, pick, picking up girls you know so i mean there, there's nothing wrong with that here as long as you're not being too creepy about it you know there's nothing wrong with that you know as long yeah, as yeah just 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 saying hi like yeah, saying hi, saying what's up. Um, some people like to call like being a player, having game or whatever. Um, yeah. But well, I guess over there in Japan, it's not it's not cool, mm. or it's not cool to do that, right? Yeah, because uh, the stranger comes up to a stranger. The concept is like this: the str- a stranger comes up to another stranger, they don't know each other and stuff like that. So uh, you don't know what kind of person is that, and. Uh, yeah. Instantly, he's saying hi and start to communicate, you know, like get, getting into a space and stuff like that. Well, not literally, but you know what I'm trying to say. So, for us, this is uh, more of a th- that, that's exactly the reason why you like why you're saying hi. You're trying to get to know each other, but for them, that's exactly the reason why they like uh, many people find it scary and fucked up. Yeah, and they kind of why why <laughs> the hell you're gonna do that. Like yeah. uh, so, the mindset and the cultural like uh, context is totally opposite, on the same fucking facts. Yeah. Yeah. See, like, mm-hmm. like, like I'm saying, like, if it's a normal situation, even if it's a normal situation, let's say you, I don't know, man. Like, let's think of a normal situation. You're yeah, like the bar. You're at the bar or whatever, and you're having a drink, and you see like a girl having a drink, or whatever, and you want to go make the approach, you know, go have a conversation. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not a cool if you do that. <laughs> Over there, mm-hmm. it's I guess it's, it's more what's way more acceptable over here, man. Because a lot of people, I think people like it when strangers come up to them and try and be friendly. You know, like, hey, man, what's your name? You know, let's be friends. Like, what are you doing? You know, let's let's go to a party, or whatever. You know. Yeah. Well, at least bring the same stuff Kiko just said uh, in a funny way. Yeah, not in a fun a, not, way. Not not a, yeah. In a fun way, in a, in a cool way, in a fun way, in a nice way, not in a creepy way. Yeah. Sounds about right. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> but. If you try to do that in Japan in a nice, in a fun, in a cool way in Japan, it's still going to be kind of creepy, fucked up. <laughs> Unless uh, if you're obviously non-Japanese. Ah, yeah. Yeah, in some, in some uh, exceptions. I don't know. Yeah, some, some Japanese like it when strangers come up to them. But I guess most most is kind of like, nah, like, don't come, in, don't come up in my personal space type of thing. Yeah. Well, anyway, so. Just to uh, some the whole stuff up like uh, the words and the explanation a little bit just try to remember that uh, Japan is the most x- xenophobic country in 21st century the most what? xenophobic uh, if I'm what pronouncing that, that right Xenoph- xenophobic well basically um, well country wise cultural wise it's uh, the most mind clo- uh, closed up mind Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Country in terms of the yeah, in terms of the rest of the world, like in terms of uh, multicultural things. Yeah. So 
I actually have a story about that. We're going to come back to it. I have like, no, two stories. We'll come back to it though. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I kind of experienced something like that, but we'll, we'll come back to it. So the word is nanpa, N-A-N-P-A. And it means to like pick up or flirt with girls. And the action is nanpa suru. So the word suru again is to do, to do something. So it'll be to do nanpa or to pick up, you know. So nanpa suru. <laughs> very useful <laughs> word maybe not i don't know <laughs> i mean at the very least it's a useful to know that yeah it's good to re able to recognize it yeah yeah all right so one more time review jay what were the three words Suika. that is tsu, not su. <laughs> <laughs> you know that probably sounds very similar anyway Suika. time out namba Suika. To append, to add, taima, weed, that herbal green, medicational, good stuff, I guess. And nanpa, basically flirting, picking up women. There you go. Okay, cool. So there's the three words. <laughs> They're not the most useful words. I don't think anyone out there I thought listening. mine was pretty useful yeah but when are you ever gonna <laughs> go up to someone and be like hey so what do you what's your name oh my name is joe okay what are your hobbies joe adding music to your playlist many, <laughs> how many times do you use a computer in a day and let's say some people actually want to switch their you know applications to a different language you know it's, these these words are good to recognize yeah i guess well i mean yeah to read to read it but i'm not i guess not to say it what so. about what about taima taima <laughs> huh? <laughs> when, when is anyone gonna you think people are gonna cook? okay i mean yeah. to be honest suka is somewhat useful taima on the other hand <laughs> hey to, yeah, to, you're hey, giving to, me giving me crap for suka no this is like to the pothead audience because you know we have we probably have some like <laughs> Um, marijuana enthusiasts listening and if they ever go to japan they might need it you know yeah, yeah. well you never know okay you never know yeah, you never know i mean yeah shibuya gets pretty crazy <laughs> all right what? <laughs> what? Is, what 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 okay let's go on to the next part <laughs> uh japanese stuff japanese whatever you guys have to us about japan what do you guys want to talk about japan you got any news music anime shows whatever events um I think I can start for this one, yeah. It's not uh, that much big of a news, but uh, you know the the beer fest around Japan, right? Beer festival? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, snap. I think I, we were there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> the thing with the beer festivals in Japan in general, so they're happening, it's not like a one uh, big event uh, per like per year or per summer or something like that it's more like of a series of the yeah series of the fests it's uh, they happening if you uh, don't actually if you don't actually follow uh, social social network like for these uh, spe specific events you never know well almost and they popping up uh, like in a, in a downtown uh, every now and then due the whole summer and a little bit of autumn sometimes so for instance uh, I I never heard anything about it. Like, I guess they did have some um, sort of commercials, just some posters on the walls in the downtown, mm -hmm. but nothing more. Just uh, one day, instantly in the downtown, in the in front of the Sapporo station, mm. yeah, there had been a beer fest right in front of the, like, uh, in the uh, in front of the Sapporo station from the south exits. So basically, between south exit of the support station and the <laughs> and the police department, there have been a beer festival. They took like a one third of the square, like in front of, in front of them, mm -hmm. and it's been like up for one week or so. So when they <laughs> wrapped it up, like literally a couple of days ago, it was so freaking dirty. The whole ground was so freaking dirty. You you could saw the spits. You could you could see. Um, some old vomit. I guess someone been. <laughs> uh, I guess someone yeah. been a project of vomiting. <laughs> yeah, bringing back memories there, Alex. You're bringing back <laughs> memories. <laughs> and yeah, but uh, that's one of the small ones. Like uh, to be honest, uh, the like 
the space wise the time wise it wasn't that big of an event but the thing is while the summer is up these uh, small and not so small beer fests uh, they they're gonna be all around the cities they're gonna be all around the towns yeah but those things those those beer festivals they, they, they get pretty good um when me and Jerry were in Japan we went to one with Alex um, it's outside and they have like a whole area closed off you go in there you get your big ass mugs of beer man you start you know downing that guy out in the outside like downtown enjoying the weather getting wasted like it's pretty good shit pretty good stuff so yep so when, when is that coming up do you know I'm really not sure I guess uh, there's gonna be a big one uh, with a uh, technical with German uh, with German beers uh, and like at l there's gonna be at least five more countries gotcha it's gonna be in the Odori Park but I'm not sure about the date the only thing I know for sure is gonna be freaking expensive. <laughs> yeah, and that's in that's in Sapporo, Japan, and they they always got festivals, man. Japan is good with their festivals. They have like you know, I guess um, in Sapporo they had the ramen festival, they have beer festival, snow festival. You know, th those are pretty fun to attend. So yeah, I guess you you could say Japanese do like to like to do the festivals, different yeah. theme festivals. Oh hell yeah! Dude. Yeah. yeah, it's fun, man. They're fun. All right, Jay. What do you got for us, man? What do you What do you want to bring to to the table? Uh, okay. Well, yeah, this is old news. Uh, it was during me and Kiko's time in Japan because we were there during the year of 2017. And during this time, I guess uh, the YouTube algorithm decided to bless a bunch of people. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. And so humble. Yeah, they they gave a suggestion to like. A lot of people uh, notifications saying hey you might like this video and it was a 80s Japanese pop song way back in the day and a lot of people when they when they saw that they were just like what the heck is this you know I don't even listen to Japanese pop music at all and then they clicked on it and suddenly they're like big fans of this singer from the 80s she's currently in her 60s now <laughs> So she just like blew up. Her song just blew up too. Um, right now the video is sitting at 25 million views. <laughs> uh, so the song is called Plastic Love by Maria Takeuchi. And I, I admit I gave it a listen the first time. I was like, eh, it's alright. Second time, pretty good. Third time I was bumping it. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Alex is probably like, 80s J-pop? Damn it, Jerry, what the fuck? But, no, is it? It's, you know it, me. Yeah, but no, the, the song is actually, I think it's, a lot of people liked it because it was like very different from what we're used to. And, I don't know, I, uh, it, it's a good, I like it, it's a good vibe. So Comments? the song got this pretty much the song got recommended to everybody and their mom. Not in, yeah. Not just in Japan only, but like pretty much yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Basically, yeah, everywhere, yeah. And, yeah, so, what's the song called? Plastic Love by... Uh, Mari, Maria Takeuchi. All right, there you go. So, so Jerry's saying it's a pretty legit song. It's pretty old school, um, chill mm -hmm. vibes. So, oh, I yeah. just want to give it a listen, give it a listen, you know. Yeah. Dude, I'm down uh, with that, man. Like, like I think, like, older songs, like, I don't know about you, Alex, but, you know, like, older songs, even, like, in the 90s, man, 80s, they have some yeah. pretty pretty good ass songs like n not just japanese but like yeah like also like here in the states no man, um the... you, you were talking about like specifically time wise uh, i've known that i still listen to the old school snoop dogg songs yeah man old school songs in general man are good man i mean earth wind and fire september that song is getting popular again it's like oh shit. um yeah the one song me and kiko have been like listening to since like Forever, Kikuchi, Momoko, Night Cruising. That one's a really good oh, song. that one's pretty legit. Yeah, yeah dude. Night cruising. That, that's, yeah. That, that's same era. Same era. Plastic uh, Love has okay. the same I feel. Don't, I don't have any fucking idea. <laughs> <laughs> the I, guy I, I living like, in Japan is like... <laughs> okay, what? My dude, I'm living in the yellow... Oh, <clears throat> I'm living in the country. <laughs> but I'm, I, I've never been into that uh, music culture. Like, nah. Since the, since the day one since i've tried that i actually mm. been trying to listen to so no no like we're saying like hey if you listen to like that um current j-pop like people who are fans of j-pop all right that's cool you know j-pop is cool but try and listen to like the old school japanese songs like 
those are pretty cool too. Yeah, they're for also people who are, yeah for people who are into Japanese music. Yeah, they're also very good for practicing Japanese because the songs are a bit slower and they actually enunciate the words a bit more. Well, I think I feel current music they they're a little bit faster and use more slang. So I mean, okay, uh, just for the people who want to try like Japanese music, but they are not actually into the J-pop. Try to listen to AK sixty nine. Is there sixty nine members? Or uh, AK sixty nine or Zebra? No, these are like sort of old school, but uh, they are in Japanese rappers. Mm. All right, there's some rap music for you guys right there. Yeah, uh, if you wanna, if, if you're kind of uh, wondering where to start, since uh, they do naming their songs, well, occasionally in Japanese too. Try AK sixty nine Public Enemy. Right, cool. So, well, what about uh, who, yo? Hold on. What about M Flow? Would you recommend that guy? Uh, once again, Jerry, just saying. I got a couple samples. I'm not really into <laughs> Japanese music in general. Okay. Well, I was just saying he was a hip hop. Okay. But yeah, just, uh, just checking. Well, there's another name for you. All right, there's a name for you guys right there. If you guys want to check out some Japanese rap or some old school '80s Japanese songs, city pop. I don't know. I can't think of any like Japanese pop artists at the moment, um, current. But anyway, um, so let me let me bring some news to you guys, and I think you guys might have something to say about this. But All I came right. across I, I came across this article that says um, Japan, the country in general, you know, the birth rate has been declining, mm-hmm. and they say that the country as a whole needs more daycare workers because apparently. There isn't that many daycare places. And the reasons for that is is that they don't allow personal daycare places. Like like if you want to take care of some kids, have a little daycare at your house. Like they're not down with that shit. You got to get a license. <laughs> so so that's already one problem. Like, okay, fuck. I got to get a license to have a daycare and pretty much make it official. Uh, another thing that's wrong with that is that people who are daycare workers are normally women. All right. And since the daycare workers are women, when they get pregnant, uh, it becomes a problem, you know, because as a woman worker in Japan, becoming pregnant is not a good thing because pretty much you lose your job. Basically, I mean, becoming I, well, I don't know, actually, but it feels like if you get pregnant, no matter what job you have too, you kind of lose your job and become a housewife. You know, like girls over there, they get screwed. Like pretty much, you gotta dedicate your life to working. And if you get pregnant, it's like, well, we don't fucking want you here anymore. So, some examples of this that I guess happens pretty often. Um, there was one company. This this made the news. I forgot what 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 the article was about exactly, but pretty much to summarize it, um, the company will allow you to get pregnant and have a kid. <laughs> allow you? <laughs> so you're gonna have permission first, like you. Can, yeah. You can't just be like getting pregnant out of nowhere and be like, oh, hey, I got pregnant. You know, like you got to plan it ahead. Be like, hey, listen, I plan to get pregnant around um, August or whatever. And then the company has to approve it and then you can get pregnant. <laughs> but if the girl decides to like, or if the girl just gets pregnant out of nowhere, well, first of all, the company's going to get pissed. Yo, and what the I fuck? Guess the, the, yeah, like what the fuck? Yo, like, you didn't get any permission to get pregnant. Yeah, yeah. And the, co-work- <laughs> the co-workers are going to kind of like bully the girl who got pregnant like what the fuck are you doing like trying to get time off and shit yeah you yachty man yeah yeah and the boss will try and make like the the worker quit like you know like hey um you didn't get permission to get pregnant and we're not we didn't give permission to have time off so pretty much you're gonna get fired hey, yo, Essentially, social so. pressure over there is real real yeah strong so so in the end I guess to summarize this article that I came across um Japan needs more daycare workers but you can have a daycare at your own house. You need to be official. Uh, daycare workers are usually women. And when they get pregnant, the workers, they end up losing their jobs. So, which makes daycares in general um, very scarce. And scarce. Also, uh, scarce. Yeah, scarce, scarce. <laughs> <laughs> and, also, and also just uh, Japan in general, like um, women working in Japan. like That's also one reason the birth rate is declining because... Women are encouraged not to get pregnant while working. Yeah, I. I mean, I, I, that basically sums up. And also, like you know, a lot of a lot of girls out there, they you know they 
This is just based on my perspective. It's just like it seems like they do a lot of hard work, get through high school, which is much more difficult to do in Japan. You know, get their college degree, get a job, move up the ranks. But once you have that kid, it's like all that kind of just. It, it seems like they're expected to just take care of the kid after that and not work. Yeah, it's game over. Yeah, it's, yeah, game over. And even even if the girl wants to continue working, like they're gonna be like, nah, like. Nah, fam. You 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 a housewife now. Yeah. But yeah, it's more like um, it's really concentrated on the stability of uh, all the all the ways to do things, and by that, uh, like to to open up a little bit of this this statement. If there is a job, and then they expect it to, uh, that you're gonna work your hours or finish the job every single day, there's gonna be stability in it. If uh, someone has uh, questions for you in terms of the job, you're going to be there to answer them or at least to give some sort of explanation. And it it all connects uh, to to every single, like, to every, every other aspect of your life. So if you have some happening that's going to, that's definitely going to affect your work, so that's going to uh, affect the company and everybody else. So they think about that in that way. Of course, that kind of makes sense. But in the same time, that's not <clears throat> the way how you live your life. You're not a fucking robot to plan yeah. and to put everything by the shelves. What you're going to do if a bus going to hit you? Well, there's uh, different different like different scenarios depending on, on the company you, you specifically work in. So they do understand. They do understand that some sort of uh, unexpected things may happen, but what you're gonna do with that with that worker, that with that poor guy slash girl slash worker? Mm -hmm. That's they're totally gonna depend uh, d depend on the on the company and the policy, how actually open minded they are. So, for instance, in my case, since uh, I I do technically work for a Japanese uh, company. It's it's more uh, it's a little bit more chill. Mm. So we got yeah we got um, the whole like it's the whole hotel business so a lot more of a I would say multicultural aspects getting into the job into the uh, people's life so they kind of getting used to that. So if you need some uh, day off like for like for medical reasons you can get them. But in a regular ass, like all old, old school Japanese company, <laughs> that's a Not the happen. totally different level. Yeah, the totally different level of the headache. Yeah. See, like sometimes even people who have never been to Japan or don't hear much about Japan, you do hear the words that are like, okay, Japan, um, they work themselves to death or whatever. You also heard like the fact that Japan works so hard and overworks that they have their own word, uh, their own Japanese word, um, death by overwork right yeah 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 you know shit like that you hear that all the time but it's like what does that mean and then you have like the suicide forest or like people committing suicide because of like they don't like the lifestyle or whatever mm -hmm. you know like all this shit is connected man you know because they're raised to like dedicate themselves to a company and, and they have no yeah and they have no idea how to change that yeah and like to be like robots and then you have this shit where like women can't even get pregnant because they'll pretty much get fired and you know like it's depressing man like <laughs> like when i was over there in japan like you see like how if you ever go to japan you see like how professional everybody is mm -hmm. you see like how like everybody looks like they're really happy and like they go like 110 percent in their job but you can all like if you pay attention it's kind of like ro like alex said like robot shit like you know like they're being watched all the time to be like giving it 110 percent you know follow everything by the book follow the rules you know yeah, slightly, slightly, uh, not even mistake, slightest miss is going to be in your ass, depending, like, uh, on, on your boss, you know? Yeah. And uh, the difference between uh, us and them, like, in terms of the of the working policy, like, uh, fail, like, we're all humans who make mistakes, right? Right? Yeah. Well, for us, right? Um, well, yeah, one example, what, I just want to throw out a quick example. So, right here in the States, man, if I... Alex, if I want to send you some stuff from here in the States, like I want to send you like a, a toy and mm -hmm. maybe like some candy or whatever, mm -hmm. um, I'll go to the post office, you know, fill out the paperwork that says like what's in here. I'll be like one toy, one candy. It's worth like three bucks, three bucks, whatever. If they look it over, they'll send it in. All right, cool. Easy as that. 
In Japan, man, every time I sent stuff through the mail, they wanted to know what exactly was like the item. Like I can't just be candy. I got to put like one Kit Kat or whatever, one Pikachu toy. And then I got to put like how much it weighed. So I got to actually weigh the damn thing because I tried uh, handing it in like that. They're like, no, you got to weigh it. So I had to weigh every single object and then put down the weight, the quantity. And then before I shipped it off, they're like, does the Pikachu toy have a battery? And I'm like, I don't think so. And they're like, so you're not sure? And I'm like, no, I don't, I don't think it has a battery. Like, I don't see why I would. So then they opened the box up, man, grabbed the toy, called the company, called the post office company and said, like, they're not sure the Pikachu toy has, like, a, a battery. Like, dude, they go hard, man. They go <laughs> that extra mile. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, if you guys want to read the article, anyone listening, I'll link it. Um, in the description in the down description, below. Yeah, of the video. If somehow you're listening to this somewhere else, well, um, I don't know where to link it exactly. But anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> so anyway, um, another thing to bring to this whole situation about um, the birth rate declining. <laughs> we already mentioned it. Nan pasiru picking up women is not a thing <laughs> over there. So guys going up to girls and saying like, "Yo, what's up, girl? Let's get to know each other, or whatever." <laughs> That's not a thing. It's not cool. So how the fuck are guys supposed to get with girls if nan pasiru isn't a thing to do? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I know, yeah, right? it's like it's all fucked up. Man. <laughs> well, well, basically, they uh, implying to get to know people like uh, from your activities. So you have to do something. And uh, why does it make sense in Japan? Like somewhat is because they usually not like majority does not just fucking around. Like uh, uh, just imagine you finish your school, right? Mm -hmm. or university or like uh, or whatever and and finish I, uh, by finish I mean you finish your day so you got uh, like a half day or several more hours before you're gonna hit the bed right before the next yeah. hard working day gonna come up so what the hell are you supposed to do in these hours so for Japanese in uh, terms of the in terms of the way how they've been raised they usually go to the sport clubs or Hang around uh, another activities with a group of people. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it could be a baseball club, uh, football clubs, and stuff like that. Like in the schools. Yeah. So they, they have a different time, uh, different type of, of activities, and that's why usually when they finish up, like they finishing everything, including the like the classes and their club activities, they they going back back at home like around 10 p.m. or something like that. Yeah. So w one way to meet people is at clubs, activities, groups, or whatever. Another way to meet people is like if you go out to the bar with friends and they bring their friends, then that's how you meet people, you know. But just approaching strangers, not it's not cool. Um, <laughs> it's but, very strange. You have to be associated somehow. Yeah, you have to be associated somehow. Like you can't just be like coming up with a random reason, you know. Like there's got to be a reason. But here's another thing that kind of puts a downer on that. Like okay. If I go to Japan, I'll just hang out with my friends, group of friends. I'll meet some Japanese people that way. Well, one thing I learned is if my Japanese friend invites me to hang out, he's like, hey, me and a bunch of homies are going to hang out and um, have like a little movie night or something. I'm like, all right, cool, I'm down. And then he takes me to his group of friends. My Jap my friend is not going to introduce me to anybody. Like He's, gonna, he's not going to be like, hey, everybody, this is Kiko, you know? Mm -hmm. like i'm i'm gonna have to make that extra effort to introduce myself to everybody so that's already one way that makes it difficult to yeah that's already <laughs> one, that's already one way that makes it difficult for me to like meet people or for us to meet people yeah. <laughs> another thing is um if it's a group of japanese friends and one invites you to hang out he kind of has to get like I let everybody know like hey i'm gonna bring like a new friend into the group and they all have to approve of it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> if they don't, if, they, if, if he just brings like a new friend to the group, they're all going to get barred. Well, not in all cases, but you know what I mean. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Um, well, mm, I've actually did experience that. I didn't know that was a thing. How did you experience it, Jerry? Let, let us know. Uh, here at UNK, um, this one guy invited me to play, to play some Super Smash Bros. And I was like, cool, uh, where are we meeting at? And he said this one dorm, uh, gosh, I, it's happened a while back, I'm sorry, I'm trying to remember. 
<laughs> so I was I told him like so what is it just gonna be me and you? And he's like, No, I have a few friends. I was like, Oh cool. So in my head I'm picturing me, him, probably two other Japanese dudes just nerding out at on this game, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, oh, I walk into that dorm, dude. That place is filled with, like, at least 20, 20 people. Uh-huh. Just, and there's four controllers, but they're all just, like, watching. And I'm following my friend, but he just walks in, sits right into the middle of the group, and I'm just left standing there like, oh, fuck, what do I do? <laughs> just leave. <laughs> no just, intro- <laughs> just lose your hand. <laughs> yeah, like, they, they, they said hi to him, and he just grabbed the control and started playing and and they looked at me like yo who's who's a freaking guy gene that just walked in and staring at us mm-hmm. <laughs> you know i was just there like okay I, mm-hmm. <laughs> and also they were all talking in japanese so you know i lost confidence yeah kind of and yeah kind of makes you it feel it makes you feel like you're not wanted around <laughs> but again like we're not saying it happens like in every situation but it's something you do notice yeah 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 i mean uh the the whole yeah once again the cultural thing they don't really have the same common sense of the uh, i guess socialization as we do mm. yeah so i mean i guess yeah like alex said they're close-minded they don't they don't really uh, want I mean, new interactions <laughs> we learned the hard way we learned the hard way um, is this a different way of doing things? Man? Yeah, yeah. So when we have like Japanese international students who come to the states, um, they will go to like an event, like uh, like the school will have an event. They'll go there, and they'll go there with like a friend. Like let's say they like let's say I take a Japanese friend to an event, and then my friends come up to me and say like, "Yo, what's up, Kiko? Who's your friend?" And I'll be like, "Oh, it's my Japanese friend. Uh, w- uh, give me a name. Uh, fuck, uh, y- uh, Yuki. <laughs> this is my Japanese friend, Yuki." <laughs> And then my friends would be like, oh, hey, Yuki, what's good? Like, where are you from? And he's like, oh, Japan. They start talking to him, whatever. And then my friends say like, hey, come play with us. So I go play with him. And then Yuki is standing by himself, kind of like, oh, like, he kind of left me behind. Another one of my friends will come up, uh, go up to Yuki and be like, oh, hey, what was your name again, man? Oh, it's Yuki. Oh, you came with Kiko, huh? And start being friends with Yuki, right? Mm -hmm. So pretty much what I'm saying is um, a lot of our Japanese international friends who come from Japan to the States, they say everybody in the States is really, really nice. They're all really, really kind. Because, mm. you know, we say what's up to each other. We talk to each other. We try to be friends, you know. Yeah, the regular <laughs> socialization. Yeah, regular so- socialization. We're like, and I'm like, I mean, they're just being normal, you know. Like, it's not, they're not being, like, nice, nice. They're just being cool, you know. But I guess it's mm-hmm. different from here and there. It's how it is, man. It's how it is. <laughs> so anyway, um, I got a question for you guys. Uh, what's that? Do you guys have any stories, um, I guess, involving a Japanese friend or st- or a stranger or something where it's kind of like, fuck, like, that was kind of awkward. Like, I guess where you gaijin smashed the situation. Mm, man. Do you have any gaijin smash stories in Japan? It's too many to count. All right, well, <laughs> give, give us one. And Alex, if you have one, give us one too. Alright, I'll try to remember. I can go first if you guys need time to think. <laughs> I guess so. Okay, good. Uh, okay, so so my first month in Japan, I still didn't realize like the whole social situation, you know? Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm going to go there, talk to everybody, be everybody's friend, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I went to the, we went to the Sapporo Station or like the mall type of place. And I went, I went there with our, um, our Australian friend, our Australian Japanese friend. You know, you know who I'm talking about, Alex? Kai. Yeah, Kai. Anyway, so I went there <laughs> and we were talking. He's really cool. We were talking and I'm like, you know, I'm like, I don't know, we we're just talking about shit. And I'm like, dude, you, you just got to be out there, you know, talk to friends, you know, make new friends or whatever. And he's like, we were, we were kind of talking about this. And he's like, so you think it's easy to like just talk to people, you know, maybe like talk to girls, you know, pick them up or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, dude, it's easy. You know, just go up to them, you know, say what's up. Like, don't be creepy about it. Of course, don't be creepy about it. Like. You know, just be nice, be cool, you know, maybe give them a compliment. Um, ask them if they want to hang out or something and then um, get their number and, like, leave it at that. You know, if they say no, then move on, you know. It's really easy, right? <laughs> and he's like, okay, I want to see this shit. I want to see I want to see you do this shit. I want to see this shit go down. And I'm like, all right, what do you want to do? He's like, I want you to find a random Japanese girl, go talk to her, get her number. That's all you got to do. Easy as, 
easy as fuck, right? <laughs> and I'm like, all right, man, no problem. I can do that. Are you guys following? <laughs> 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 I don't think I heard this story, but I'm really interested. Guys. It's one of my worst moments, man. It was not my okay. hardest. Okay, we we've all had them. Just keep going. Okay, whatever. So, so I see a girl. She's walking by herself. Whatever. And I'm like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to her. You know, just say what's up. Try and get her number. You know, be nice. Whatever. And so she's walking, and like I kind of do like that thing where I walk ahead of you, her and like turn around and kind of like walk by her, and I'm just like, oh hey, excuse me. And right when I said, excuse me, she looked at me. She kind of had like this, this freaked out look. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck? You know, like, <laughs> like, like I was traumatizing her right there on the spot. And all I said was like, yo, ex- excuse me, you know, and she had that look in like, e- wait, 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 in English or no, no, in Japanese, you know, so you know, this guy, you know, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, but she had like this, freak, she has this freaked out look like, dude, we're, we're like in the middle of like a mall, dude, like, you know, crowded area, like, it's not. And anyway, she has like this freaked out look, and I'm like, <laughs> at that point, I'm like, fuck, <laughs> I did not, I did not approach her. I, that was like probably like the worst approach. And I'm like, I don't know what to say, man. I'm just like, um, uh, <laughs> I'm like, uh, I just wanted to let you know, like, I, I do my Japanese was bad. I was, just, I was something like anata no uh, kyo no fuku ga kawaii or something like that, or anata no kawaii. You know, something like, hey, I, like you look cute or whatever, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, okay, dude, okay, dude. Okay. yeah, 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 dude. Let's like go. when I said that, man, I'm already like this situation is already lost. It's already game over. Like the moment I opened my mouth, it was game over. You know? She, yeah. Yeah. She just looked at me and she just like nodded, and I'm like, yeah, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> Santa. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. Um, so anyway, mm. um, yeah, Kai was laughing his ass off. Dude, like like I am right now. Yeah, yeah. No, he was laughing hard, man. He didn't let me live it down. He did not. <laughs> he did not let me live it down. Man. And that that was like I kind of realized at that moment, like holy shit, you cannot just approach random Japanese people and try to be the friend. That's not a thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, that w- that was my fucked up situation. Not my proudest moment. I don't even want to talk about it. But here we are. So, <laughs> who wants to go next? Hmm. <laughs> Hey, the girl was cute, though. That's all I got to say. <laughs> uh, I mean, you let her know. <laughs> yeah, I let her know. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Hey, I mean, it's bad, but, you know, at least you tried. Yeah. That's, the, that's the important thing. Most, most people would have bitched out, you know, talking a big, they talk a big game, but then they just like, nah, man, no, I, I, I can't Dude, just approach you. Here in the States, man, like, all right, I tried, you know, go up to a girl, like, hey, excuse me, like, I just want to let you know you have a cute outfit today, you look cute today, whatever, okay, bye, have a nice day, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they'll be like, "Oh shit, that you know that that's that shit. That's something they're gonna post on Facebook." <laughs> <laughs> but now in Japan, don't yeah. do that. That's gonna fuck up your. You're just gonna yeah. fuck. It's gonna give you a bad memory. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right. So, what, what, do, what, what stories do you guys for us? What stories do you guys have, Jerry, Alex? Dude, I can't top that one, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get that. I've never gotten that embarrassed. Dude, it's not that bad, dude. It's bad, but it's not that bad. Dude. With a witness, too. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm just trying, I was trying to prove a point. <laughs> uh, um, well, let's see. Come on. I, uh, okay, so I was in class, right? Okay, when when you uh, when I arrived at the university over there, um, they give you a list of classes to pick from, and I saw one called Japanese Culture and Customs or whatever, something like that. Yeah. So I was like, heck yeah, I'm gonna take this class. You know, it seems like an easy A, no problem, no no problemo. And plus, how many Japanese students are gonna take a culture class? You know, this is probably just gonna be full of foreigners. Heck yeah, right? Yeah. So. Uh, I arrive in the class. I'm one of the first people. One of the first people to arrive, and I'm like, "Heck yeah, you know, ready for this." And then, you know, a Japanese guy walks in, sits down. I was like, "Oh, cool. We actually do have a Japanese student." And then another one, and then a few more. <laughs> and then pretty soon, this class is like filled with like 30 students and probably me and two other foreigners. So I'm like, "Huh." I guess a lot of Japanese people are interested in the class about Japanese culture. Who would have who would have 
Who would have thunk it? <laughs> <laughs> but whatever, maybe, because, you know, this class is obviously going to be in English. Well, the teacher walks in, writes four kanji on the board, and starts speaking in just pure Japanese, and I'm just like, oh, shit. Oh, f you know? Yeah. <laughs> I am in the wrong class, buddy. But I'm like, you know, I got to power through this, dude. I'm in Japan, dude. I, I got to... I can't let something like this defeat me. I can't just cower and take an, a class taught in English, whatever. So, you know, I, I, I powered through. I sat there and tried to understand. I didn't get 80% of what the guy was saying, but I was just, yeah. But um, I did start understanding when he's saying, like, you know, the world has different cultures, and we have a few students from different countries here. We should get their perspective on things. Like, you, you're from Australia, and my Australian friend was fluent in Japanese. He had no problem explaining <laughs> his culture in Japanese. Yeah. And everyone was like, oh, Nihongo Jozu, you know? <laughs> and then they're like, do we have any students here from America? And you know my head went down. My head <laughs> went down. I was like, no, I cannot follow that up. <laughs> and, but, but that didn't work. He found me, and he says, um, what is the most strangest thing about Japanese culture to you, and I was like, hmm, eto ne. I know. Yeah, eto ne. You you already fucked it up. <laughs> yeah, I already did fuck it up. When you're saying something like eto ne towards the teacher, <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, 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 I already fucking it up. And also, I started my sentence with ore wa, which <laughs> is a big fuck up too. <laughs> Don't do that to a teacher. Yeah. Ore, ore. So when you say I in Japanese, you have, when you're talking to a teacher, you're supposed to say the respectful way, which is watashi. But what Jerry said is ore, which is like extremely cocky. Yeah, it's like, yo, yo, what's up? This is, yeah. You're like, yo, it was good, uh, it was good, teach. Like something like, sub teach. <laughs> yeah, something anyway, like that. Anyway, so, so I was like, you know, ichiban okashi koto wa. So it's just like most interesting thing or funny thing for me i wanted to say like the uh cute the cute culture you know kawaii culture mm. kawaii bunka but i said it fast and i kind of mumbled so I, it was like kawaii bunka and everybody heard kawaii which means scary so everyone laughed and the teacher's just like what what, what do you mean <laughs> And my Australian friends saved me saying, oh, he, he, he was trying to say kawaii bunka, not kawaii bunka. And All right, so... After that, yeah, I was like, I got you smashed the whole situation. So pretty much essentially, yeah, I want to imagine, imagine like a couple of international students here at our campus, Jerry. And the teacher is like, yeah. oh, hi, you're from Japan or whatever, Korea. And they're, and they're like, hell yeah, teach. <laughs> and it's like... And it's like, all right, what's the strangest thing you found here in the States? Fuck, man. Gee, oh, shit. Oh. It's scary-ass culture, man. Scary, pretty scary culture. <laughs> yeah. Dude, <laughs> dude, do, you think, do, do, you think, do you think the Japanese students in your class were cringing when, when you said ore? <laughs> I don't know, dude. I was, tr I was really focusing on my Japanese at that point, And I was just like, yeah, I was really trying to put my thoughts together that I was not paying attention to <laughs> other people but I mean they were all yeah I'm pretty sure they were probably like I, yeah bye <laughs> like not the, what the fuck is this guy saying oh <laughs> uh, no <laughs> yeah well yeah, pretty more good. like more like they would understand that uh, guys in you're not actually fluent in Japanese so they let they most likely they let it slide to be honest yeah but if that was a Japanese who'd been talking like that, that guy got some attitude issues. He like, got some balls. Yeah, like real one. I'm talking about yeah. the, the street gang stuff. Yeah, like he could freaking tear down buildings with the wrecking ball. No, no, no. <laughs> wrecking ball he's got. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, when we'll have time, I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you a little bit more about Japanese gangs and what they do. All right. That'd be for another one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this one's getting kind of long, though. Do you got any stories? Any stories for us, Alex? Um, I, uh, I do, I do actually. But uh, the thing is, uh, it's kind, it's kind of simple. All right, that's fine. Well, uh, so uh, long story short, I'll start 
you tell me if you like it or not. <laughs> mm. The thing is, uh, so once again, uh, it's, I don't like it. It's been uh, fuck you. <laughs> 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 Let me shine, motherfucker! Don't steal my light. <laughs> all, right, all, right, all, right, all right. So the thing is, um, once again, it's been uh, only like six, maybe one year in uh, since I've been in Japan, right? Yeah. So uh, just a reminder, I've I've started to uh, actually talk. And I mean, uh, communicate with people like a daily conversation level. Only after, uh, only after me being three years in Japan. So before that, uh, I could put put out some sentences, but that that was the top of my skills. So more like uh, I understand eighty percent what I've been told, but I can say only twenty percent of uh, whatever uh, I've been told or whatever I know. So long story short, once again, just been talking with my friend. He been saying that uh, he have uh, he he had a fight with his friend, and by that uh, the way how uh, my mentality on the wording worked is like he literally had a physical fight. So when you when you say uh, when you say uh, I have I have a fight or I had a fight, for me that's instantly like uh, I'm picturing uh, like you know. The real physical tension and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, one guy hitting another and whatever. That's 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 just me. I don't know. That's uh, what I, I've been imagining. I said, "Whoa, that's actually uh, that's actually messed up. What happened? How come? That's your friend." Uh, yeah, you know, we just uh, we had different opinions and stuff like that. A totally regular explanation of like uh, of why uh, they had a fight and stuff like that. Oh. Okay, and what he did, he started. Uh, he started to be a little bit like I don't know, rude. Like the, the the whole phrasing was uh, was not pleasant stuff like that. So I I did that too. So one after another, and uh, we've been keeping that like we've been keeping going like that for ten minutes or so, and then we just left. So um, okay, I don't really understand. So where the fighting part is? <laughs> well, mm. where where is the fighting part? Mm -hmm. I'm like, what do you mean? I just told you. Like um, okay, I don't really understand the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> so the whole concept of the phrasing, uh, like of word fight, I guess English and Japanese languages are kind of similar in in the expressions. Yeah, because uh, in my in my culture we don't say a fight. A fight is the last resort of bad communication between bet between people. It's not a communication at all. No, I that's uh, yeah. For me, when you say uh, have, uh, let's have a fight. That's it. The human line is over. There is no words which gonna work. So that's a last resort fight. Whoever fucking stands, that uh, like that's the last argument. That's the last fact which yeah. wants the argument. That's it. That's my concept. Yeah. So yeah, cause cause here in the states, yeah, like when English also. Let's say like, oh, I got into a fight or whatever. Like, it could mean like just like an emotional thing, you know. Like, I'm not talking to that yeah, person. Yeah, yeah, I totally understand that now, but yeah. But I guess in your, when Alex is Russian mind in Russian culture, he's saying when you say fight, it means like we threw punches, we kicked ass, you know. Yeah, like basically, the fight is when the whole communication is gone. That's it. We cannot argue we cannot like communicate as human beings anymore yeah. that's it but also we yeah we cannot back up in this like in, in that uh, situation either so there's a fight yeah so so your friend pretty much is like oh i got into a friend uh, i got into a fight with my your friend is like i got into a fight with my friend and you're like all right so who fucked up who you know like what happened and he was like oh he yelled at me and walked away and you're like and then he threw a punch no no he just walked away like <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I get what so you're... That, yeah, so there's uh, the the whole concept I've been dropping on my friend. What the hell is going on? Well, friend, he was a Japanese, so yeah. Uh, yeah basically, after my explanation, uh, what what the hell the fire is, and if you want, uh, I can back you up. Like, I'm not I'm not the strongest, but I definitely can throw a couple punches. Yeah, it looks like uh, I, I scared him off. <laughs> <laughs> he, because after the, after that uh, we didn't actually communicate <laughs> <laughs> yeah so okay so this 
this guy's like, I got into a fight, you know, my friend yelled at me, and you were thinking like, well, let me kick this guy's ass, oh, like, I have your back, you know, <laughs> I'll go, fu- I'll go wait, fuck wait, him wait. up. Um, uh, Kiko, wait a sec, uh-huh. uh, you may have to cut this uh, part off because uh, I have problems with the internet, I totally cannot hear you. Oh, that's fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Can you hear us now? Alex? All right, well, I guess, man down, man down, Alex is gone, <laughs> he... He got lost in the internet world. No. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, it's, it's okay because we, we pretty much could end it here, Jerry. Uh, so. Uh, I was you're one. back. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. back. Oh, yeah, oh. you're back. Dude, we were about to end it without you, dude. <laughs> yeah, we are about to say, fuck this fool. <laughs> yeah, we are about to talk shit. Oh, fuck you, puto. Little, little do you know there's a fourth segment talking shit about the Russian. For, Japanese. Once he's gone, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, I'm just kidding. All right, yeah, let's finish this up. Yeah. All right. Closing remarks. Closing remarks. Um. Who who ended it last time? Was it me or Jerry? Uh, I think it was me. Fuck. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening to our fifth episode of our podcast. You know, I hope you enjoyed it. This one was a little bit dirty, a little bit crazy. Well, not, not maybe not crazy, but we we didn't definitely dirty. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like we weren't as educational, but that's all right, because... I tried. <laughs> we all tried. <laughs> <You're> uh, like <laughs> we, when you try your best, but... <laughs> nah, nah, but like I said, we're down to like teach the bad, the good, the whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. As long as you guys mm-hmm. learn something, if if one year from now, like somebody out there listening, if one year from now you're in Japan and, and you need some weed and then you remember the word Taima, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, so that's anyway. your... That's your free ticket for free yeah. meals. Yeah, if you're solitary confinement. If you're talking to like a teacher and you start bringing up Taima and Ore and all this crap, wow. Yeah. 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 If you have problems with people. Mm-hmm. So the words the words that we learned today was Taima, um, which means marijuana, weed. Uh, tsuika, mm-hmm. which means um, to add something, like uh, add music to a playlist. And add data to a spreadsheet. There you go, add data. And nanpa, which means to pick up or flirt with girls. I guess, can I go the other way around? Can girls nanpa nanpa guys? Yeah, but uh, that's called um, specifically gyakunam. Okay, okay. We're we're going that that could be a that could be a word for the next podcast episode. (laughs) I guess. Mm -hmm. Uh, So nanpa to pick up girls or flirt with them. So anyway, uh. Thank you, everybody, for listening. I really appreciate it. Um, this <laughs> one's a little bit longer than last yep. one. Yeah, but that's fine. Yeah. All right, yeah. yeah. Stay tuned. Stay yeah. tuned for the next episode. Yeah, we'll see you guys later. Uh, Have a good one. Peace, peace. <laughs>